All right, so the plan today then, gentlemen, um, is that we're gonna try and make our first standard solution. As the name suggests, standard is it's, it's a known concentration, it's an exact concentration. So as we talked about in our previous lessons, when you are making up a standard concentration, you need to know that the exact mass of chemical that's gonna go into the volumetric flask. And when we get to that particular point, we've gotta make sure we have the exact volume in the volumetric flask as well, when we take that to the bottom of the meniscus. So the first thing is the balance. Now, no matter what lab you're gonna walk into in the future, there will be a balance somewhere in that room. This balance is exposed to the atmosphere, so it's quite sensitive. Okay, typically in a normal uh, environment, we would have the, the actual the balances in a separate room maybe, and they'd actually be even closed in the cupboard, all right? When you put your stuff in, you close the cupboard because they're so sensitive to draft. These ones, not too, uh, not too much of an issue. Um, there is, this, again, instructions about not pressing down the balance. These are to 500 grams only as a maximum they can actually weigh. This is three decimal places, so it's a very accurate balance. I've pressed the zero button already with nothing on it, okay? But probably what I should have done was, sometimes people are messy, and what I probably should have done was to make sure there's nothing left on here from the previous group, and I'm, all I'm doing is just basically making sure that I'm, I've got no error in there at all, okay? So I don't want anything sitting on there that's gonna impact my results. And there was a bit of stuff sitting on there already. So that's all gone, okay? Um, there is also, um, a safe operating procedure for the balance, right, that you are supposed to read prior to the experiment as well. All right, so I'm gonna actually put my beaker on the balance. I prefer to weigh straight into a beaker because that's what I'm gonna to use to transfer the solution over in a minute, as you'll see. Now, I'm not worried about the weight of the beaker. It's irrelevant, so I'm just gonna re-zero that again. And I need to weigh out, so many grams am I gonna try and weigh out? One point two. About how much? 1.2. About 1.2 is what I'm after. Now, I'm not gonna get exactly to 1.2, am I? Um, so, I'm only after around about 1.2 was what we calculated. 1.3, 1 1.190. So in your groups, um, somebody would obviously record this mass down because we've gotta use that to do our calculation for the concentration, the standard concentration. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to transfer across to our bench and we're going to make up the standard solution. There are two balances in the lab, by the way. There's one on this side and there's one on that side, okay, of the lab as well. Leandra did ask me if the balance is being calibrated. Well, you'll know that because if you press the zero again, it should go back to zero. If it doesn't go back to zero, what sort of an error is that, by the way? Systematic. Systematic, Systematic. all right. And of course, then you draw it to my attention, so if that balance is not working, Mr. Campbell. But then you could allow, you could allow for that. All right. So, we've got two methods, and I'm gonna show you both methods to make up a standard solution. One you'll probably find easy, one you'll find difficult, and it depends on really uh, where you end up, and et cetera, uh, which method you adopt. So there's no one way of doing this, there are various options. So what I've got ready on the bench is, uh, Obviously, we're going to have our volumetric flask. This one is a 200, okay? This one here happens to be a 250, not that it makes any difference, um, because I'm going to calculate based on this volume with this mass and this volume with this mass. Now, you wouldn't make up two standard solutions. You're only going to do one, but I'm just showing you this for the purposes of just demonstration. All right, um, we're going to, and if we're following the procedure, okay, we were supposed to rinse our Conical, sorry, our volumetric flask with distilled water first um, because we don't know what was in them before, okay? And you might do that a couple of times. If you look at the procedure, it might say two or three times, but you've got to be fairly okay in relation to that. Just tighten that up so it doesn't leak too much. This is the preferred method for me, okay? So I've got the funnel in the flask, okay? And I, this is a straight solid transfer and you'll see, hopefully, why this is the easier of the two. It'll only work if the funnel's not wet, okay? If you're gonna work from a, a funnel that is wet, it'll obviously clog up the funnel. It doesn't work out to be very successful. So I'm just going to transfer the solid in. I don't whack it all in at once. I'm just gonna put it in at a time. You can see the flask is also wet, or it probably wasn't a good idea to do that. 
and then I'm going to rinse the flask, sorry, the, the beaker, and I'm going to make sure that I'm getting all of the chemical in. You're going to make a standard solution of sodium hydroxide in a few weeks' time. Okay, I want all that to go into the solution. So the way that I'm doing this method is, hopefully you'll find, is a little bit easier. So I'm going straight into the solution. Now if you were pedantic, you'd start rinsing this on the outside as well, which is what you're supposed to do, all right? When we do sodium hydroxide, I'll come around with phenolphthalein and I'll put little drops of phenolphthalein on your beaker and if it goes purple, it means that you haven't got all the sodium hydroxide in the flask. So I'm going to rinse the funnel. And I'm even going to rinse the outside of the funnel, okay, into the volumetric flask. We don't want anything left behind, okay, at all. Sort of reasonably confident that that's got all of the solution in. And now I'm going to rinse it down from the neck of the flask. Sound? <laughs> it looks like this. Okay, now I've added um, my sodium carbonate to that, and I'm not really happy about that. All right, I've got to make sure that I've dissolved most of the sodium carbonate. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to use the funnel, and I'm just going to increase the a little bit, it's going to take too long, so we're going to just increase that volume. Hopefully, it will dissolve a little bit better in there. That will be fine, and we'll just again make sure that nothing's been left on there. All right, so not getting too excited about swirling it, you don't want to drop it either. Thank you for the juice, <laughs> and that should get there eventually. Okay, can anybody tell me why I can't proceed to make up the volume while that is in there? Like that, it has to be dissolved completely. Anybody tell me homogeneous. why? Homogeneous. <laughs> what? Uh, to make the, uh, the substance homogeneous. It's got to be exactly homoge well, it's homogeneous, but if I've got uh, sediment in the bottom, it's not going to work very successfully. And now I'm, I'm not happy with that, so I'm going to let it sit there for a bit longer, and I'm going to go on to the other technique. Now, this technique you'll find much more challenging, and hopefully you'll see why. So that's going to dissolve eventually, we'll come back to that one in a minute. Alright, this method involves dissolving the solution up into the beaker, and then transferring everything into the flask, but you'll see it's not an easy process. So this is a method that you might want it to adopt, but there's a chance that you're going to lose some of your solid if you use this method. So it's up to you how you do that. All right, I'm going to use a stirring rod for this, and I'm going to try and dissolve as much as what I can, okay, into this small volume of water. And again, everyone's got to do one of these by themselves. So you don't share this, like one person isn't holding that. And Gordon, can you stir that for me? No. You're doing it by yourself, okay? <laughs> so nobody will be there to help you in the big wild world. All right, now, what's what I'm going to do now, because this is where people really get confused, um, they find it a challenge. So what I'm going to do is just use a steering rod um, as a guide to transfer everything down into that flask, okay? And I mean everything. So I've got to be very careful, all right, that I don't lose anything at all. So I'm going to rinse that off again. Put a bit more water into my beaker. Cameraman, you getting all this? Yeah, cameraman's got this on Good. the Surely, Andrew. <laughs> okay, again, as you can see, Gordon, is, is it not everything's dissolved there, is it? No, no, it's not. You're not. <laughs> 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 Don't be my pharmacist in years to come. <laughs> All right, so close enough is not good enough. For chemistry, you've got to be exact with this. So imagine this, you're making this up for your mum. <laughs> That's the exact concentration. Gordon wants to kill it. Okay? No, keep, keep, keep going. 
Shall we get the cell? Alright, so it's, and again, the sodium carbonate I think might be a little bit um, hydroscopic to that, it's taken a while to dissolve, but it will get there eventually. Yeah, what's hydroscopic? Hydroscopic means it's absorbed moisture from the atmosphere. Okay. It's supposed to be anhydrous, but it gets a little bit sticky. It's anhydrous. Anhydrous means without water. It's supposed to be okay. anhydrous sodium carbonate. Okay. All right, same thing. Oh, so I'm going to transfer that through with the, my stirring rod. And I'm going to now just rinse the stirring rod. Got to be not too over zealous for this. I'll try and get it all in there. Should be done. And I'm going to now just do a final rinse. I'm pretty confident that I've got it all in there. And again, when you do this with sodium hydroxide, it's lots of fun. Because I'll come around and I'll put phenolphthalein on your bench everywhere. And if it goes purple, you've failed. Nearly squared on camera. Okay, so that's all there. And again, same thing, I'm going to rinse the funnel down. Rinse that down. Rinse the flask. Okay, that one. Now, just checking it again. That one, alright, work, has worked a little bit better. It's obviously more of it's dissolved. Okay, and we're now going to. Um, Again, rinse the inside of the volumetric flask down, that neck. I don't want anything sitting in the neck of the flask. Yeah, screw it down. And we're going to just speed up this again. Zoom out, zoom out. Okay, so. so I'm going to just take it to the top of the meniscus or close as I can. There's still water right there. Funnel. Oh, that's good. Hey, I got too much hand shake. I'm like blood's going from the bottom of this. See, this is um, what you call it, relaxing ambient sounds. Does anybody need to go to the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is where people go wrong. Um, they go over the bottom of the meniscus. Can you see the grease? Close. Um, and here is where we need to be fairly precise, okay, with our quantities. I'm going to use a new beaker uh, for the distilled water. And I'm going to use worry, mate, it's a all, it's all video. <laughs> tea pipette <laughs> that I'm going to just give a quick rinse. Okay. And I now want to uh, get in line with the bottom of the meniscus. And I want to be pretty careful because if I go over the graduated line. Go in. Enhance. Like this. Enhance. Okay. If I go over the graduated line. Don't go over that graduated line. What do I do? Or you get a pour it in. I might tip it down the sink and I start again. Yeah. Okay. So, don't, don't screw up. at that particular point, all right, just watching again. So at that particular point, that's where you come and get me to check it. Okay. And once you are confident that that's the bottom of the meniscus, then you can um, make the, the solution make homogeneous. homogeneous yeah. By the way, if that's that still for over the weekend, which it might, um, the first thing you would do on Monday um, is make sure you shake it again okay Another before you start the experiment <laughs> now it looks like it's it could be some solid particles in there but i think they're just air bubbles because if i did this and i saw solid in the bottom again tip it out because it means you haven't dissolved all of the content solute into the solvent okay. possibly if it's like that okay Probably you might be able to do that, you might be able to dissolve it, okay? So this method of making the solution first, that was one method. Yeah. And of course, you would then need to label that solution because it's very confusing yeah. um, once you've got a whole lot of colour solution sitting on the bench. All right, back to this one. Um, again, uh, that's better. Assistant Gordon, is that? Yeah. So that's dissolved. <laughs> okay. Now, what we'll do is we will... <laughs> Um, actually speed this one up a little bit. All right. Now, you wouldn't grab another wash bottle, by the way. All you would do is just actually grab a beaker of water. And for the purposes of the video, we are using um, distilled water. But for the purposes of our practical here at school, 
we've found that Adelaide tap water is exceptionally good. No. Okay. That's where it's contaminated. So if we actually use tap water now, it's a very, very good, uh, reliable supply of water. Um, and so we actually should be using tap water for this, although it's in, in a lab, um, in industry, it would be distilled water. What is the tap water for? It's not generally an issue. Systematic. Okay. Stuff can come out of here is pretty good. Oh, how lucky was that? All right, so what I've done is, all right, unbeknown to me, I wasn't paying much attention because you were talking too much, Tony. Um, but there it is. So um, just by adding that in, I got the exact uh, exact volume for the other solution. All right, and again, homogeneous. Make this one homogeneous. Is it homogeneous or homogeneous? Homogeneous. So it's a homogeneous, okay. No, you take it no. no. One person has yes. to do it. Yes. Can anybody I gotta zoom see into the issue? Oh, I think. Is there solid in there? Is there solid in there? Is there solid in there? Yeah. Yeah. I can't see anything. This resolution is not good enough. It's like oh, I think it was. Um, is that it there? Reflection. No, I think that's just a problem. Let me just check it. It's got a little camera Okay. Pretty hard to see when you're trying to. Uh, no, it's okay actually. That's no, good. All right. I thought it was a solid that I just saw floating um, on there, but it wasn't. So that's fine. Happy with that. Okay, we got All right. So we've made our solution. All right. Using either one of those techniques, I think the solid is probably the more accurate. Okay. Um, to to work with. As you can see. All right. 250. I, these benches are good. I, I think it's probably a good idea to put your stuff up there, but don't knock them down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, those standards. Okay. I won't do that. Maybe you can move back because I just want to go to the board and right. Leandro will video me, video me for the stuff at the board. All right. Before okay. we do go back, Leandro, just note the following. Yep. Note the following. Yes. Shush. And everyone needs to be listening, please. So I've tried all the time to keep my work area fairly tidy, okay? That's very important because as you get lots and lots of things happening on your bench, if your bench looks like probably some of what some of your bedrooms will look like, it's not going to work, okay? So obviously I didn't label this as being water, and I've had it before where students have had this sitting on the bench and there's two or three working in the group and somebody grabs this and they think that it's acid and they start adding it to their solution and of course nobody's labelled it as water and so the mistake has already been made. So whole lot of beakers set up with solutions in them. The white part on the label, okay, see where it says 4%, you can actually rub that off, okay. So, uh, directed towards and the... Um... these labels are designed for that, little white parts of the beakers. All right, right. yeah, yeah. You just yeah. write HCL, right, with a lead pencil, not pen. Um, and you can easily make sure that you're organised from the beginning. Some people put paper down, like that, and then they label the paper what it is um, sitting on the bench. Works fine, all right? Yeah. Okay, back to the board. All right, cameraman needs to look at the board now. <laughs> All right, let's... Yeah, can I pause it for a bit? <laughs> or... All right, now. Yeah. Just relax. Stand on, please. I just want to finish off. So, just to clarify that, so I, I did a rough estimation based on what the practical was. I worked out that if I weigh out 1.2 grams, it's going to be about 0.06 molar. Now, I've gone and actually weighed that quantity out. Um, it was 1.312 grams, all right? Um, because my my partner recorded that down, didn't he? Wait, what part on the Gordon, did you record that? that? That's you. Wait, wait, zoom into his face. The first thing you need to do is to make sure you get a decent partner who records the mass for you as you weighed it out. So, so basically, there's probably a lesson in that. What was it? Don't trust Gordon. One point one nine. One So one point one nine zero is correct. Thanks, guys. What I should have done was should have wrote it down straight away. Okay, on my frac sheet or in a practical book, because what you're normally working from is a track book where you put all your notes into. Okay, and you normally would submit that in a tertiary environment. Alright, so I've gone, I've got my mass, 
I know my volume. Now, again, I can use either 250 or 200. I have to do a recalculation based on my actual maths that I've put into the flask, and I'll have a new concentration that I carry through to the next experiment that we're going to use. Okay. Any questions about that? Is that all we do? Just go to the gym once a day? Yep, today I want you to practice making a standard solution. I don't care whether you have to do it five times, okay? You, the, the ability to be able to make a standard solution is something that I assess you on in your summative experiment. Okay? There you go, guys. So, in this instance, we're using sodium carbonate because it's easy. When I say easy, it's not corrosive. Um, it dissolves relatively easy, but in your summative, we're going to be using sodium hydroxide. No. Sodium hydroxide is a bit more difficult to work with. Okay, same procedure, it's got to be dissolved, same percolation, everything identical. The only difference is the solid changes. Alright, any questions? Alright, thank you, video. Man.